Welcome back. I'm Dave Blake. It's good to be with you again. And I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. At the beginning, I said that we want to inspire you through authentic, awesome, and actionable insights. I don't know about you, but I've been inspired today, and hopefully you have as well. I'm the founder and CEO of Client Success, and we've had a blast hosting you today, and I look forward to sharing some thoughts. Also, I wanted to say, how about that surprise announcement with Christy Falterusso joining our team? We are so excited. I know most of you know her and agree with me that she's one of the best thought leaders in SaaS and customer success, and we couldn't be more thrilled to welcome her to our leadership team. We're excited for our customers. We're excited for the innovation that she'll bring to our company and look forward to having her on our team. Now for today, if, before my main thoughts, I want to just share, get personal a little bit. And first thing I want to do is thank you. I want to thank all of you CSMs uh, out there. Uh, you, the, your job is difficult. We've talked about that. And it's a difficult situation you've been in this last year, probably the most interesting and difficult years of our lives. But you continue to be in the trenches, doing your thing day in and day out taking care of your customers, and driving value for your company. There's many of you that have been impacted in difficult ways this last year, whether being impacted personally or, or with your family in COVID, whether having difficult transitions to work, work back in the home, or whether it's where you, you were one of the few or one of the many that were impacted with unemployment. I think I can speak for the whole customer success community by just saying, we love you, we care for you, we're here for you. And thank you all for what you do day in and day out. Now, in an ideal situation, I'd rather be together in an intimate setting, maybe around a table at dinner, talking shop, sharing best practices, um, and just getting acquainted. Unfortunately, we can't do that this year, maybe next year but we'll make the most of being together virtually this year. Now, you're probably wondering, why is Dave speaking at the CS, uh, CSM Summit when we promised you content for CSMs by CSMs? Well, let me tell you, back in 2003, when I started my career, I was a CSM. I was at an early stage startup called Omniture. And it was an amazing experience. Omniture went through startup to scale up and to IPO. And, and then we were acquired by one of the best companies in the world, Adobe. And I was able to be along for that amazing ride and had an amazing experience. I was in the trenches, take care of customers and doing what you do every day. One of the cool experiences that I had, and here's a picture of me as uh, back in the day, was the day we went public and with Omniture. That was a great celebration of the hard work that we had done as a company. And I was fortunate to be on the strategic accounts, not only to start the team, uh, but grow and scale it over the years. I remember the first time I showed up, I was given the company Adobe before we were acquired. And I later was able to ma manage um, some of the best brands in the world, whether it be Sony or eBay or Microsoft or Apple or The Gap or Home Depot. It was a, a fun and um, enlightening time to be able to be on the front row within these customers to understand how they work and to help drive value as their CSM. But it also brought the stresses Those of you uh, that have those day in, day out, I felt the same thing. I felt the stress of taking care of customers day in. I felt the stress of es escalations. The anxiety of trying to take care of them and to retain them year after year. And it didn't help that our CEO, in no uncertain terms, told me one day that you will never lose a strategic account. Wow, I had to swallow hard that day because that was a scary situation to, to have that. So if you saw my smiling face at the IPO in the picture I showed you before, this is how I felt when he shared that news with me. I had severe anxiety and stress trying to take care of my book of business that were all strategic accounts 
and all spending hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars with Omniteur. And so today, I want to speak as one of you. Um, I've been in your shoes. I've been in the trenches. I've, I've experienced the good, the bad, and the ugly of customer success. And so if you'll let me, today I'm going to kind of talk to my younger CSM self and give advice about what I would tell my younger self based on the experience and perspective that I've had over the years. And hopefully, you'll get some great insights as well. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit of what I would call the modern CSM and share what I believe are attributes and, uh, that of modern CSMs, of the modern CSM today. So let's start. We'll talk about number one. I believe modern CSMs focused on impact. They focus on impact for their company, and most importantly, they focus on impact for their customers. Let's start with customers. Your role as a modern CSM foremost is to deliver impact for your customers. Now, I believe that the single best way to do that is to be hyper-focused on this, on understanding, evangelizing, and delivering to your customer's definition of dot, 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 value, success, desired outcomes, key business objectives, or goals. It doesn't matter what your definition of success. What matters is their definition of success, and every one of your customers may have a different definition. So it's important to, to understand, evangelize, and deliver to each of your customers' definition of success. So I have a simple model to, to continue, consider doing that. It's called the CSM impact cycle. The first phase of this is to say, I need to do discover. I need to discover and do deep discovery on the customer. Understand their competitive landscape. Understand what their business does. Understand their key objectives for the year. What are the key goals and the OKRs? Maybe even understand what your executive sponsor's compensation is built around, because that's really important. Do the research, do the due diligence to really understand and, and do the discovery. The second is to define. As I said in the previous slide, it's to define it, not by you, but by taking the things that you learn and coming back to the customer and, and work with them to define their, their definition of success. The third one is then to align. Now that you've got their definition of success, your role is to align all the resources at your disposal, your solution, your team, your executive team, to, to execute around their definition of success. And the last one is to deliver. That's the most important thing, is to deliver that impact at the end. Now, this isn't a one and done exercise. This is something you do over and over and over again with all of your customers. Make sure you do that. The second, the, the key thing to remember, though, is that effort does not always equal impact. And sometimes what you'll find is that you will exert significant effort, but only achieve small impact. That's not the best uh, scenario, obviously. On another scenario, you may do the opposite. You may find things that have significant impact with your customer that only require a little bit of, a little bit of effort. In one of the, the retailers that I managed at Amateur, they were one of the top retailers in the world. And we were able to find this scenario. You see, we found that the chairman of the board there cared about one simple metric day in and day out. And that was revenue by hour, every hour of every day. And so we were able to simply deliver a report to that executive cell phone every hour that showed hourly revenue. Every day, every, every hour and of every day. And that, that single solution alone made us tremendously sticky at that retailer. And to the fact that we stayed with that retailer for many years as they were paying us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. But we found out what the, exec what the uh, chairman, the executive sponsor, the one who, who is the most important person in that company, and we delivered that, that objective to him. 
So d deliver impact to your customer. That's the number one responsibility of a modern CSM. The second is to understand and be able to articulate your impact to your company. Now, this is a, this, there, it seems like that over the years, we've had customer success executives and teams almost feel like that, that we're, we're trying to still gain a seat at the executive table. And we, we display this kind of inferiority complex. And maybe that we're on the outside looking in, or in this case, this little boy on the inside looking out at the fun. We need to stop that way of thinking. We have a seat at the table. Let's stop that discussion. There's never been a better time to be in customer success. In fact, the last year with COVID only increased the visibility and the importance of customer success. When almost a year ago, almost every sales pipeline stopped and dried up when the COVID crisis hit. And so CEOs and executive teams realized that all I have right now is my current customers. I need to double down on customer success. Those CEOs and companies that did so, I'm sure came through with um, tremendous success throughout the, the COVID crisis. And those who didn't, they probably regret those decisions. So remember your value. You have more, a lot of times we have more sales quota than, than our sales, we have more revenue quota than our sales counterparts. And just last night when I was practicing my presentation, I had an article come into my mailbox that I thought was fascinating. That proves the point. This is an article that says the highest paid HubSpot executive last year wasn't the CEO. Well, who was it? It was Yamini Rogan, the chief customer officer at HubSpot. How cool is that? Now, I don't know uh, Yamini, but I have great respect for her from a distance. And I appreciate the fact that this headline went out to celebrate how far we've come in the customer success industry. We're the top paid executive at HubSpot, a public company, is their chief customer officer. Uh, congratulations, Yamini, and thank you for representing all of us. Now, one of the challenges of us understanding our value, I believe, is, is bringing it back down to CSMs, is how do we articulate our value to the company? One way to do that is to use what I call the resale model. Uh, or, and that is to focus on under sharing your impact to a company across these six um, areas of the business. One is retention. Two is expansion. Three, second order revenue. What is that? That's when you sell to a former customer or an executive sponsor who leaves their current company and brings you in at a second company. That's called second order revenue. Four is advocacy, G2 crowd reviews, um, references, um, case studies, all of those advocacy um, activities. Number five is lifetime value. How much has each of your customers spent over the life of the relationship? And six is executive sponsors. How deeply are you able to build uh, credibility and influence and impact with executive sponsors? Now, as a CSM, your ability to articulate how you impact those six areas as a CSM and as a customer success team is critical. And so as a modern CSM, learn how to articulate that. And remember to always frame these in the sense of revenue generated because in SaaS, revenue is king. Uh, so drive impact as a modern CSM. The second one is modern CSMs master their craft. We've heard this throughout the day. I think in the last the panel discussion, somebody talked about learning, continuous learning, and the focus. We heard uh, Noel talk about this, improving. And this is a critical element for all CSMs. You know, I'm, I'm often amazed when I hear professional athletes or, or pro the professional entertainers who are the best entertainers and athletes in the world say uh, that they are constantly trying to master their craft. And I'm like, you're already the, the best in the world. What more do you need to do? But if you know them, they always do. They focus on getting better every day. Like Noel said, 1% better every day has a significant impact over time. Let's take a few examples. 
So Cristiano Ronaldo, who many would say is the king of soccer or, or, Europe, or European football, his quote, I love this quote, I feel an endless need to learn, to improve, and to evolve. Then you have the queen of entertainment, Beyonce, who says, as soon as I accomplish one thing, I set a higher goal. That's how I've gotten to where I am. Somebody in our community posted this on LinkedIn the other day, and I loved it. And, and, and thank you for whoever did that. So these, this is the mentality of those who try to ma master their craft. Now, in customer success, there are a lot of skills to master. There's the major skills like relationship skills and business skills and project management skills, sales skills and tech skills. But there are also a lot of other competencies around those major categories that are important to master. Now, you don't have to bite off all of this at once, but I just encourage you as a modern CSM to take one, one a day or one a week or one a month, find a competency that you want to improve and master, and then find great mentors or managers and leaders and friends and colleagues and peers and find ways to, to master those one by one. You know, when I mentor um, young professionals, and anybody on my team knows this statement from me as well, I always say, excel in your current role, and then show thought leadership outside your role. Because I believe that those who demonstrate this, this saying, who do this in real life, they have an accelerated path in their career. Well, often young professionals will come back and say, well, how do I, ex what do you mean by excel in your current role? Well, Vincent Lombardi, the great football coach, had a great statement that he said, excellence is achieved in mastery, in the mastery of the fundamentals. So if you want to excel in your current role, master the fundamentals and do so every day. Now, the third one is own it and orchestrate it. Now, there's nothing more frustrating than a, to a customer success leader or a CEO, for that matter, than a CSM who lacks ownership across their book of business. On the other hand, there's nothing more inspiring and appreciated than a CSM who dis displays extreme ownership. Now, extreme ownership um, is, is not just doing things yourself. It is a concept of owning it, but it's not a concept of playing hero ball or being, trying to be the, the lone hero, to do everything for yourself and never engage, never ask for help, um, never leverage your, your colleagues or all the resources. No matter what customer journey you have from a post-sales customer journey, you cannot do everything and should not do everything yourself. This is what I call trying to play solo success. And those who try to play this game often fail. The great leaders and the great CSMs are able to own it and then leverage, strategically leverage the resources around them to then orchestrate success over the life of the customer journey. There's, I love it when you give a, a CSM a large account or a difficult count, and she's like, hey, back, I got this. Don't worry, I got this. That's the kind of leadership we're, we're looking for. But what, what she does in this situation is then she goes to work. She builds up plans, she engages with the customer, and then she strategically leverages every one of her resources and teammates, and even the executive teams and leaders, to go and orchestrate that plan. Now that is inspiring, and that's what a modern CSM does. Now, if you think about the great conductors of the world, the great conductors do this. You see this. This is Joseph Young. He's the music director of the Berkeley Symphony and widely recognized as one of the most gifted conductors of his generation. And if you look at his face, he's got this command. He's got his orchestra around him, all these musicians and, and, and instruments. And he knows exactly when to use one, when to use another, when to bring them in together for harmony to deliver a masterful performance. Think about a great quarterback, Tom Brady. Um, and you think about, we always talk about quarterbacks orchestrating comeback wins or orchestrating the wins. But a quarterback like Tom Brady can't do it alone. 
They take the leadership and lead out, but then they leverage every team member around them to drive success. And if you see in this picture, the great respect that the quarterback and his team have for one another. And then think about Megan Rapino, who is the captain of the U.S. women's soccer team. Imagine having a renewal celebration like this, where, where hypothetically you as a CSM are holding up your renewal trophy and all of your team is around you that fought hard to get that renewal in the, in the door. That's what great CSMs do. Like great conductors and quarterbacks and captains, they, they, show, they lead out and show leadership and ownership as they orchestrate winning drives, winning winning um, games and magnificent concerts. CSMs do the same, except they, they orchestrate winning customers and success within their companies. So, as a modern CSM, remember that customer success is a team sport and lead out, own, and orchestrate it. And remember, you got this. We have confidence in you. Number four, is modern CSMs build relationships that last. Now, just a, about a week ago, I took my first, my 15-year-old son to get his driver's permit, which was a scary situation in and of itself. But I, I went to a, a DMV, a de, de, the Department of Motor Vehicles, and it was exactly like this picture. I didn't take this picture, but I think it was the exact same, um, the exact same office. And you can see in the picture, you've got people waiting in line, filling out forms, taking tickets, being shuffled from one line to another, um, waiting in a waiting area. And that was my experience. And everywhere I went, it was like, I just felt like I was a number and a nuisance. And sure, in that experience, they were trying to, to um, make the process as efficient and scalable as possible. But in the process, they really took out the human connection in the experience. Well, for me, the online and maybe SaaS version of this is the bot. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of bots. Um, sure, I, I, I see value in them when I just need quick information or when I'm trying to get something and I don't want to talk to a sales rep. But outside of that, I'm not a big fan. And the worst is intelligent bots uh, that make me feel stupid and dumb and unintelligent to where I'm caught in this endless loop and I can't figure out the information I need, nor can I get through to a human. Now for me, I don't want to talk to an intelligent bot. <laughs> I want to talk to an intelligent human. And sometimes we as teams, we outsource our entire customer success to what I call the CSM bot, where, th where there's, there's th information that's given and there's nurturing that happens, but there's really no human connection with the customer. The next CSM that, that I will talk about is what I call the Tin Man CSM, which is a, maybe not a little bit better. This is, this is a CSM who kind of prefers to keep it a virtual arm's length away from their customer. And they will do virtual check-ins, automated check-ins. They'll send trip ticks, tips and trick emails. And maybe they'll show up uh, 90 days ahead of the renewal to, to check in and ensure that the auto renewal goes well. Now, the Tin Man has a brain, if you know the Wizard of Oz, and is intelligent, but doesn't display much heart. There's a little bit of connection, but not really this human emotional connection with their customers because it's all, almost a, an arm's length um, relationship. Now, as we've talked about today, th these strategies are successful. But I think all of us want to be what I call the authentic CSM. Now, on this, you'll recognize the authentic CSM. It's Krista Roberts. And I'll probably, this is probably may embarrass her, but she's new to our team. And we're so grateful to have her. Chris is an example of the authentic CSM who, who loves to engage with customers any chance she gets. And even if she's assigned to a low-touch low segment, 
she'll still want to engage, and when she does so, she'll try to drive, connect on a human-to-human -human basis to really understand the, the individuals on the other side of the phone and find ways to connect with them and to drive impact for them and for their companies. Now, the beauty about the authentic CSM is they are intelligent and they have a big heart. And thus, they dis display care, concern, empathy, authenticity in their efforts, which are all foundations to building positive relationships that last. I believe that the modern CSMs build relationships that last through having authentic human relationships. Find ways to get to know your customers on a human-to-human -human basis and meet their needs, and then propagate that throughout your, throughout your company. Instead of celebrating logos and talking about logos and customers, talk about ind individuals. Name them by name. Show their, their, their picture in your town hall meetings. Highlight them in a movie or a video or a, a, a clip for your, for your companies and make them real so that everybody in your company has empathy for those individuals and they will want to, to serve them and drive value and impact for them. Now, number five, modern CSMs get involved in the, in the community. We are so fortunate to have such an awesome customer success com community. There are so many people who give so much that are selfless. They, they share their content, their best practices, their frustrations, their challenges. They mentor and reach out and lift and inspire. You've heard from many of them today. Every person we've had on this agenda today are your peers or colleagues or thought leaders who give and contribute so selflessly. Well, I would encourage the modern CSM to get engaged in the community. So reach out to a peer or a mentor. Consume or create content. Share a post, comment on a post. Be involved in a community, but engage in some way and contribute and benefit from this global customer success community that we all love. And for, for those of you who are leading out in our community, thank you. You are a gift. You inspire me every day as I read your content, as I watch your, your, um, your, uh, your, your, if I read your blogs and watch your webinars, as you send notes to me or you ask questions or you engage in other ways. Thank you. And on behalf of all of us, thanks for all who contribute to our global customer success community. Now. Number six, modern CSMs elevate the positives. For those who know me, uh, know that this is something that I share all the time. I try to be optimistic, and we all try to, it seems like we all try to be optimistic, but as we talked about at the beginning, being a customer success manager is difficult, and sometimes the, the negatives in our role tend to overshadow us. And we sometimes feels like we have this negative cloud uh, that follows us around. During a, any typical day uh, with, for a CSM, you are uh, in, inundated uh, or overshadowed by so many things that can take you down and, and have, give you a negative perception. Whether it be escalations or whether it be product gaps or SWAT teams or angry customers or detractors or executive sponsor turnover or red account red accounts, or churn. All of these are difficult. And sometimes we end up focusing so much on these negatives that it's hard to see the sunlight in our day. And, and in fact, my biggest pet peeve is that the single best outcome we can deliver to our company as customer success managers is stated as a double negative. Negative churn. Why do we do that? Why not call it positive growth? So my challenge to you as a modern CSM is to focus on the positives, to elevate the positives. So in your day-to-day -day and week-to-week, -week, find ways to, to uh, focus on 
and make it infectious across your team uh, to understand the positive things that are happening within your team and within your accounts. Talk about the growth. Talk about happy customers, your promoters. Share your references. Talk about wins or outcomes or solutions that you're, that you're delivering. Talk about the value. Celebrate renewals. I hope all of you celebrate renewals as lou actually louder than your sales team celebrates new customer wins. At the end of the day, I just hope that you consistently celebrate success within your company, within your team, and for you individually. After all, our titles and our space is named Customer Success. So let's celebrate success within our customers and within our companies. Now, last but not least, modern CSMs embrace the future of work. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, back in the day when I was a CSM, old school CSMs like me, they had three ways to really engage with their customers. One was over the phone, two was email, and three was jumping on a plane to visit your customers in person. Believe it or not, we didn't even have Zoom back then. <laughs> I know, that's hard to believe when we are on Zoom 24-7 today. Well, today, modern CSMs are empowered to work wherever, whenever, and however they want, using a myriad of tools and solutions to deliver impact for their customers. And over the last year, this only accelerated and accentuated during the COVID crisis, where this came at us so quickly and so fastly that it changed the nature of work and the nature of customer success forever. Now, we believe at Client Success that the future of work in customer success is all about next generation solutions for communication, collaboration, and productivity. And we have a passion at Client Success to build solutions that power the future of customer success, the future of work in customer success, and empower the modern CSMs. And with that passion, we are building solutions this year that we will bring to market that will power the future of customer success and the future of work and empower the modern CSM. Today, we're excited to, to announce a new solution for the modern CSM that we believe will change the gateway, change the way you engage, communicate, and collaborate with your customers. We are thrilled today to announce the launch of what we call Conversations by customer Client Success. Now, Conversations is a new solution. It's a Chrome extension that gives you a direct line into your customers and allows you to communicate and collaborate directly with your customers. So no longer would you need to use the traditional email or traditional task management. All of those, those capabilities and solutions are brought into one in conversations where you can collaborate with your customers in a seam seamless way, whether it's messaging or task management, and you can drive and orchestrate success with them and with your teammates. We're excited today to announce the early launch of Conversations by Client Success. Now, what is Conversations? Let me share a little bit about it. Conversations is a simple collaboration app for CSMs and their customers and their teammates. It allows you to bring all of your customers and contacts into one simple place with rich transparency and visibility. Next, it allows and empowers and drives easy conversations with one or more of your contacts and also all of your teammates as you orchestrate success with your customers. Number three, it allows you to create and complete tasks with your customers and team members. 
So no longer are you bouncing between a collaboration tool, a task management tool, a communication tool, email or whatever. You can do that all within conversations. And we believe that conversations is a better way for modern CSMs to communicate, collaborate, and execute with your customers. Now, Mark, should we give a uh, should we give a demo? Do it, man. Should we let everybody? Do it. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna walk you through conversations. Now, the scenario I'm gonna walk through is a typical scenario for you. We have a, C, a CSM who we'll call JD, and we have his new customer who we call. Carla, who happens to work with Pied Piper. So let's jump in and take a look at conversations. So first aspect of conversations is we will start right here. So the first thing that happens with conversations is that JD will go into conversations and send a simple email to his customer, Carla. And Carla will receive the email, accept the invite, authenticate with Google or Microsoft, and then simply install the Chrome uh, extension very quickly. And as she does this, she will go in and, and pin it so that she has constant visibility and accessibility of conversations right in the, in the top of her browser. Now, JD has invited her and left a personal message. And now we want to watch Carla, who has accepted it and installed it. She'll come in to conversations. She'll see JD's message and respond that, hey, this is really cool. JD will, can, right within conversations, recap their recent, con their recent onboarding call and discuss a couple tasks that they wanted to follow up on. Now, instead of going from conversations where she, they're, you're messaging into a different app, JD can enter those tasks right within conversations, as you see up in the top right-hand corner. Carla will say thanks for adding the task here and remind him that there's a third task that he forgot to add within conversations. JD will respond. And he will be able to just click on the, the task tab within conversations and quickly enter that task right then and there for everyone to see. Enters the task name, the date, the due date, the priority, assigns it to call, uh, Carla, and boom, we've entered the task there. Now say it's a week later and JD decides to, has already completed the task. He simply has to go in there in the same task to, uh, um, tab Give Carla a heads up right within conversations that he's completed the task. And there you go, a successful orchestration of at least one of many tasks in this, this long relationship. If they want to go back at any time and look at the completed tasks, they just navigate into the sort menu, click on completed tasks, and right there they'll be able to see the completed tasks that they have. Now. Let's, let's talk about um, other aspects of it. So we're going we're gonna to show you a couple other situations where um, they have, they're able to, we, that we've really tried to embed common solutions and common workflows for customer success managers right within, within conversations. And so if you think about in any given day or any given month, how much, how much time are you spent launching Zoom or Calendly? Probably a lot. Well, within conversations, you're able to do that right in line, right within the, the Conversations app. You don't need to bounce out to Zoom, and you don't need to bounce out to Calendly. So let's, let's give that a look. So JD will come in the next morning and sees that, uh, sees that he had a notification at the top. And Carla asks some questions that may take much longer than a simple message reply to answer. So JD suggests, yeah, you bet. I have time to have this discussion now. Do you want to jump on the Zoom? She says yes. And with one simple click of the button, you can click and, in, and embed the Zoom link within the conversation and launch Zoom that easy. 
That's a way, an example of how we embed Zoom within conversations to make your, make your conversations much more productive and easy. Now, how about Cal Calendly? How many times are you, you scheduling calls with your customer and you have to fiddle around to go find your Calendly, Calendly link and cut and paste it within the conversation or within an email? Well, with conversations, you can do that very easily and seamlessly, similar to Zoom where we've embedded it into your workflow. So in this scenario, he sees another notification up in, his, up in, his, uh, in the Conversations app. He goes into that Conversations and sees that Carla wants to schedule a training session and asks if there's a good day or time. JD as a CSM says, you bet. I'm happy to do that and, and says, I've got my schedule fairly free and then with one click of a button, embeds his Calendly link so that Carla can go into her, the Calendly link and schedule time on his calendar. So there you see the, the beauty of Conversations. Conversations brings all of your workflow, your standard communication and collaboration task within one solution. And we're excited with this to launch the era of what we call conversational customer success. Well, Mark, what do you think? No, this think awesome. it's going to be awesome? Yeah, I'm really pumped for it. It looks like there's e even a bunch of people in the chat pane that are already excited, asking a bunch of questions. I'll tell you what I'm most excited about it is, you know, when I think personally about the way I communicate with family, friends, colleagues, whatever, like the way that I communicate personally has changed. The different technologies that I use has changed over the last 5, 10, 15 years. But for a lot of you, the way you communicate with customers, besides, you know, COVID pushing you all to Zoom, Everybody's been using the same thing for the last, you know, 10 years. Yeah. It's yeah. email, it's, it's all this stuff. So this is a really cool way to start take steps to really thinking about how the modern CSM should talk with their customers. So I guess, you know, that being said, like who, who should care about this? Who, who, who'd you build this for? We, bought, we built this for the modern CSM, for all of you. So this allows you to engage any of your customers and also bring in your teammates so that they can engage and collaborate with you. So any CSM out there, this is for you. We built this, we crafted this solution just for you. Nice, so, so everybody on the call and all their friends that are CSMs, like th th this yeah. is all built for them. Um, so are, are you launching this? Is this yeah. something they can get access to today? Is this, you know, yes. what's that about? Is this just a, a, a fancy slide? What's <laughs> no. that? We are, we're thrilled to say that we are launching this today. So those who are interested in signing up for our exclusive wait list to, to get access to conversations, all you need to do is go to clientsuccess.com forward slash conversations. The page is live today. You can sign up and get on the wait list today and get access to it over the coming weeks and months. So what, what, when they go there, what's it gonna cost them? Absolutely nothing. We intend Conversations to be a free product. We want you to use it. We want you to, your customers to use it. We want you to engage. And so Conversations is completely free for CSMs, your customers, and your partners and teammates. Nice. Well, you heard the man. So, so don't, don't drop this feed. Go open a new tab, clientsuccess.com forward slash conversations. Go on there. You'll see the full landing page. The wait list is at the bottom of the page. So scroll down, get on the wait list, and then you'll hear from us as we start to approve more and more people on the wait list. So still a beta process. So we're still working through it. I love the fact that you guys have already started throwing in questions, does it do this, does it do that, does it do this? Everything that you're putting in the chat pane here is gonna help us to say not only what the product does today, but what will help it to enhance more and more over time. Um, anything else you wanna say, Dave? No, just that conversation is gonna be game changing Thank you for all you do. Thank you for inspiring us. And we're here to honor the modern CSM that you are. So thank you. Cool. Thanks, everybody.